What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here with Cheesehead TV, talking football with my good buddy, Andy Herman, from the Pack-A-Day podcast, and a purveyor of fine Packers takes everywhere you go on the internet. Andy, how are you? We know who the Packers are playing on Saturday. It's freaking divisional playoff week. I am jacked up. Packers 49ers. I couldn't be more excited. The Packers are winning this game. I'll see you later. Have a great week. Wonderful. Thanks a lot, everyone. I mean, okay. Anybody who follows myself on social knows that's pretty much how I feel about literally anybody who came into Lambeau Field this weekend. Essentially, if the Packers play their game and play a clean game, they're going to win. That's my kind of thought process here as far as the Packers are the one team that can beat the Packers. Yeah. But if we look at the matchup, I understand people's trepidation, fans especially, saying, oh, it's a bad matchup for the Packers. I wanted to look a little bit closer at that with you. Uh, obviously, a lot will be made of the week three matchup between these two yeah. teams for good reason. Obviously, the, it's the most recent kind of matchup we have to look at. There are a lot of things that are different for both teams at this point, though. And if we're going to start, let's start on the, uh, the 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 big bugaboo I think most Packers fans are, are quote unquote, worried about. And that's the, the 49ers run game, right? Now, obviously, Debo Samuel has certainly taken the league by storm. Yeah. They have really created something there, his physicality, his athleticism. But I'm telling you what, that Mitchell kid who did not play last time around, right? Uh, he's no joke. Uh, he's He is just as much of a, a problem, going to be as much of a problem for me. Especially, to me, the whole thing comes down to this zone stretch game that the 49ers like to run. You got to be disciplined. Because both of these cats are so good at finding that cutback lane. If you are out of position in any way, shape, or form, and I'm looking at you, Devondre Campbell and Chris Barnes, it is going to be a long day at the office. Yeah, I think discipline is going to be key. And in a way, super thankful for that Detroit Lions game because they were not disciplined in that game at all. And I promise you, Kyle Shanahan watching into that game, and I know oh, it wasn't mercy. exactly it right. wasn't exactly the the Packers A plus game. I get that, but I guarantee you, all the reverses and the end arounds and things like that. A lot I of that eye candy, he's right? Licking yeah. his chops watching the tape if he's seen that already uh, on the lines, which I'm sure he has. So I, I think that they're going to try everything to mess with the Packers and try to get them undisciplined and unaligned. Wouldn't shock me if they did a a handoff outside to Debo early to try to get that defense to stay honest and then pounded the inside uh, because now all of a sudden, especially after all those reverses and end arounds and trick plays against Detroit is green Bay, a little gun shy of being like, well, we can't crash down. We got to stay. And all of a sudden you've got open lanes in the middle of the field. So I think Detroit ultimately did green Bay uh, a solid by playing the game the way that they did so that green Bay can address some of those things over the past couple of weeks. I go back and I watch the the week three, and I know it's no Elijah Mitchell. I know they've used Debo Samuel in a lot of different ways. But I thought Green Bay was pretty sound in that. I think, too, if you're Green Bay, you have to really think about adding. I know they've done so well with the, the cover two and, and two safeties deep all year long, but you got to really think about getting Adrian Amos potentially in the box as an extra defender or Savage. You could right. go either way, but I'd probably go Amos. And, and really making Jimmy G beat you to the outside with players like Brandon Ayuk, uh, you know, Juwan Jennings, Marquise Goodwin, whoever they want to use. If, if they, if Jimmy G on a bum thumb in cold weather beats you to the outside against potentially Jair and Stokes and Douglas with Ayuk and, you know, Juwan Jennings and that sort of thing, right. tip your cap. But I don't yep. want George Kittle. I don't want in the middle of the field. I don't want Debo middle of the field. I want all of that covered. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see how Joe Barry attacks that. Well, to me, too, it's like you talk about the 49ers run game, obviously very productive, and it's been the engine, so to speak, for the yeah. 49ers on their kind of late season surge here. They're going to get theirs, right? I mean, I, you're not shutting down Debo Samuel. You're no. not shutting down this 49ers running game. To me, a big part of this is about not just the discipline that we were talking about, but wrapping up and tackling. We've seen some really good stretches when it comes to tackling for the Packers, but we've also seen some slippage and some reverting to bad habits here late in the season. Yeah. To me, I, th I think a big part of it is you've got to be sound in your tackling, sound in your technique. And I think we saw glimpses of that in the game against the Vikings. Obviously that's one of the more recent games in the yeah. cold at Lambeau. If that defense shows up and I know there was a very limited threat when it came to the passing game in that, in that matchup. But to me, the work Kenny Clark did there, the work they did as far as wrapping up and making sure extra yards, cheap yards weren't yeah. on the offer, because that's a big part of it for me. If they design or scheme up whatever they're going to get in the run game, yes, that is going to happen. But you can absolutely not allow them to 
break an arm tackle, throw a shoulder into a guy and have him bounce off of it. I'm looking at you, Kevin King, you know, and allow five, seven, 10 extra yards because you didn't wrap up and get a guy on the ground. To me, that's going to go a long way to limiting the effectiveness. Cause again, they're going to get theirs. They're a really talented team. You don't get this far in the season. You don't get to a divisional round game unless you're pretty damn talented. Yeah, this isn't an air yards team, right? They're a run after catch or right. run after contact team. Exactly. And it's going to be, you know, guys like George Kittle, not easy to get down. Debo Samuel, one of the toughest players in the league to get down. Elijah Mitchell, Question. that that play where a Mitchell almost broke it against Dallas, oh, where he just coming like, out of their own end, right? Yes, yes, like that. Yes. Like you could see, like he's electric as close. hell, man. Yes, he no question. So, like, this is a team. Ayuk, same thing. Like, this is a team that's not going to go down easily, and you have to make sure that you are fundamentally sound with your tackling. And Green Bay has been for the majority of the season, but that's something that's going to be paramount because, again, I, you and I talk, or I talked about the exact same thing. Um, on, on the show today. And you said it best, like Debo is going to get his. And if Debo ends up with 15 touches for 120 yards, so be it. I'm fine with that. If you can control everything else and make sure that those guys aren't getting there. So um, I think that's going to be a really big key to this game, but you hit the nail on the head with tackling and fundamental football. Now it's interesting because we're obviously addressing the big thing. That's going to, I think garner most of the headlines coming into this matchup. But to me, if you switch it around, you talk about the best way to limit them on the ground or what they're going to do offensively. Is this a week where we see Matt LaFleur, Aaron Rodgers, et cetera, if they win a toss, they actually take the ball at the start of the game to try to get a lead and try to get the 49ers chasing it right from the get-go? Because it does seem pretty obvious that the 49ers are not built to play from behind. They are built to run the football, control the clock, keep the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hands, punish you with their running game and obviously put as many points on the board as possible. We saw them struggle settling for field goals in Dallas. Um, but if you can flip the script on them and you have Jimmy G, as you said, with that bum thumb in the cold, trying to push the ball downfield, hell in a beautifully climate controlled stadium yesterday, he sailed passes on two guys who were perfectly open and you know, two interceptions, etc. It just seems such an obvious recipe for success. Do you think the Packers try to, get their, you know, get the football first and put some points on the board initially with their offense. Yeah, I absolutely think they don't. <laughs> I, think right? more. I know I just said all that. And I'm like, yeah, they're not going to do it. No, nope, it I makes too you. much sense, Aaron. Um, I yeah, think they're going to try to have the crowd on their side and think that they can get, you know, have their defense all jacked up, full of energy and Man, try to but get you look at that the look at that opening sequence I know. from the 49ers I'm, yesterday 10 yards a clip man I'm I'm team Aaron Negler on this one Maybe. trust me I I'm, I've been saying this for like they get the ball first every time I don't care right. about the double up but the weird thing the one weird thing about it is the, the 49ers game this year was the one like antithesis of their entire season right. where they actually yep. got up 17 nothing in that game and yep. you're feeling good and then the kick returned before halftime and they get the score and then everything Well, and flips. there were a couple of questionable Absolutely. pass interference penalties on third downs that extended drives really kept that game close. I mean, well, who was the ref in that game? Oh, God. I, I don't want to. No. Nope. No, we're not talking about refereeing. Not going to do it. No, no, sir. Fair um, let's talk about the Packers offense. Let's look at this matchup. Obviously, with the front that the 49ers have, and obviously a monster question mark in this game is Bosa, his health. Is he going to be back or out of the concussion protocol? No clue at this point, uh, as we're talking about this on a Monday. But um, even with Bosa fully healthy, I think this is a team that the Packers can take advantage of at home with Aaron Rodgers at the line of scrimmage, utilizing his snap count. We've seen him do it against so many really talented fronts this year. I think the easiest and best example is the four, you know the Rams uh, a couple about a month ago or so in Lambeau. Now clearly they still you know had to get the ball out of Aaron's hands quickly. I think that will still be the mo. But I'm telling you what, Devontae Adams and, and company against this secondary. I know they play kind of this cover three buzz a lot, you know, and that has been a, a kind of a bugaboo for Rodgers throughout his career. But a lot of that has been predicated on the fact that they haven't been able to run the ball. They have Aaron has been trying to push the ball downfield. I think this is a game where if they get to the short passing game. Man, there are there are ways and plenty of places they can take advantage of the 49ers secondary. 
I like the the reason I'm so confident in Green Bay in this game. It might be by one point, whatever. I don't know how many they win by, but I like Green Bay. But it's it's because I think Green Bay has more avenues for success. And you just named another one. We we talked about one earlier where if you can make Jimmy Garoppolo have to throw the ball a ton. And then, two, I think if you can get Green Bay going in the short passing game, we saw Aaron Jones have a ton of success, especially out of shotgun against the 49ers in week three. And I don't think the 49ers have an answer for Devontae Adams. Yeah, he put up over 100 yards. He easily could have had 200 yards in that game. They had a couple drops, a couple miscues here and there. And Rodgers hit him that one over the middle where it looked like he was going to have a concussion, but it turns out he just had the wind knocked out of him. But that's a ball he probably catches under normal circumstances. So, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. So I, I just think Green Bay has, has more opportunities there. And also mark me down, put one in the column. Green Bay is going to get a, a, you know, a, a shot play off of, a, you know, a, a hard count. And a, they're just due for one uh, off to a, a false start with a free play. So mark me down for a, a shot play, big play for, for Green Bay this weekend. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see if MVS is available. I mean, that that back injury could really change things as far as the, di- the dynamic of what they're able to do down the field. You saw MVS had a great game against the, the 49ers last time around. He had that sweet yeah. touchdown in the corner there. Um, he just changes how you play that offense. So I do think that's that's going to be interesting to track. Obviously, is Randall Cobb available? I think he helps them a lot in the slot if he's available. We don't know yet. Um, but the one thing that they will have for sure, regardless, you know, Bosa or no, David Bakhtiari. I mean, remember, this was Yash Nyman's first start back yeah. in week three. Now we've got David Bakhtiari back is going to be interesting to see how much they lean on him, not just for pass pro, but in the running game as well. I think people maybe forget you saw glimpses of it in that Detroit game. David gets out on the edge, man. He seals that edge and it's just, you know, Aaron Jones off to the races. Uh, I think that could play you know, potentially a big role just in the running game. I know obviously the pass pro is there, but the yep. running game, I think, can really come alive. So a couple of things, you know, I think one Bakhtiari, one of his, you know, things that he's so good at is getting to the outside and getting out on a corner. Corners right. can't go low on offensive tackles and he's right. seen offensive tackles just obliterate corners and safeties and defensive <laughs> so backs in the open field because they can't do anything. If Bakhtiari gets out there and it's a corner, like that's one of the things he's good at, even when they could go low on him in the past. Now they can't. I think that's an opportunity there. I also think they've really missed – like the Green Bay at no time this year has had like a one, two combo that you can just run behind when you need something. And I think right. Bakhtiari Runyon for the first time all season can legitimately be that one, two, where you feel very confident, where if you need to pick up a couple yards, we're going left side, we're going behind Bakhtiari and Runyon, we're going to get that, that first down. So those things, and then just going back to receiver for a moment as well, I know MVS is, is in question, but I, I also think Green Bay has to be buoyed by the fact that Alan Lazard's playing the best football of the season, oh, maybe the best football that he's played this career. Um, and I think Randall Cobb coming back is huge too. So yeah, I think Lazar, or excuse me, MVS potentially not playing is, is worth noting. And I think that would be a potentially big loss. Um, however, I feel may, maybe better than ever that Lazard Cobb and Devonte Adams could, you know, are more than sufficient to get through this game with a victory. And it's, I mean, you're talking about injuries too, who may or may not be available. Fred Warner tweeting out today that he sounds like he's good to go. Uh, it was a bit of a scare yesterday, obviously in that Dallas game. That is that is a major break for the 49ers in the sense of if they are without him and Bosa, I'm not saying it's a wrap, but it's a hell of a lot easier for the Packers. Now, we don't know about Bosa, but looks like Warner will play. He is so freaking good. He is such an eraser, sideline to sideline. A lot of the stuff the Packers like to do to try and take advantage of stuff on the perimeter, whether it's the wide receiver screens, whether it's the bubble stuff to the the, the running backs, he erases a lot of that, if, if not erases it. He causes problems in your blocking scheme. Guys not being able to get into position because he's so quick. I mean, he alone could really gum up the works for the Packers. He's a dynamic player in the sense of, you know, you talk about blue chippers, right? Guys who tilt the field. He is certainly a guy who Rodgers will know exactly where he is on every single play because he's a guy who can wreck things any, any moment, any play. I can't overstate it. Fred Warner is that good. And I think – yeah, I'm expecting him to play as well, but I think the first thing to keep an eye on is it is 100% Fred Warner, is it 90% yeah. Fred Warner, and no is question. it 80%? You know, because if he all of a sudden can't get that quite sideline to sideline, right? If there's just a little bit of a hitch and he's just a tick slower, that can make a huge difference. If he's not, you know, getting up the field, he's not this feeling as strong. If he can't flex his ankle quite like normal, like all of those right. things could absolutely matter. So 
Um, even if he's out there and even if he's playing, um, you know, it doesn't mean that he can carry the seam against DeGuar, the, like the, all those things. So I think right. th those are things that you're keeping an eye on early and often, especially maybe you in see the cold. Some, see some testing early out in that game, you know, maybe not going at him directly, but <laughs> right, see, yeah, exactly. seeing but what he's seen. capable of yep. in, in a sense of like, send a backer on a wheel route, you know, try DeGuar up the seam or somebody yep. in regards to how is he, how is he moving? That's mm -hmm. a, that's a, that's well stated. And it doesn't even have to be your primary read on the play, right? Like exactly, you know, no, just put it on be tape. into the right side, but you're just getting a exactly. guy up the field just to see how Warner absolutely. just to see how he moves. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right, you know, here we go. All right, <laughs> defense, offense. What's what's left to talk about? Special teams. Okay, so obviously the bugaboo all year, special teams, and you want to say, I mean, they've righted the ship, but they they've been a little bit more consistently competent let's say that um now i know mason's missed a kick we've had a shank or two from the punter etc but for the most part it's been competent and if they can just get that because this is how this game would possibly turn for me there's like one or two ways the packers lose this game obviously something like a turnover deep in your own end that gifts them field position and thereby points and or a major special team screw up and shank, missed kick, botched hold, et cetera. Those are the things that are going to get the Packers beat. How did we think about the special teams operation in the cold against the Vikings? Because that's the one kind of comparable game we have so far to look at and see how the operation worked across the board. Yeah, I think if, if memory serves, I think, you know, Browns and Vikings, I think they played pretty consistent special teams. And again, the bar is so freaking low. So low. Point. So <laughs> low. Just don't screw anything up major. Like I would accept like a 35 yard punt as like one of your bad plays. Like I would accept like right. a return for the 49ers out to like the 35 is one of your bad plays. Like if you can even just have a couple of those sprinkled in where you're like, oh, it's frustrating. Like I can live with that. But it's not going to break the game open. Not going to break the game, right? That's what you're looking for. No game breaking plays. And I think you go back to that week three game, right? The Trenton right. Cannon return before halftime was a massive play in that game to give San Francisco a ton of momentum. Um, and I also think, you know, game on the line right now. What if I told you, you know, 46, 50 yard field goal for Mason Crosby game on the line down by one, you're everyone's butts in the stands are as clenched as possible. So, um, you know, I think those are all going to be things that the special teams is good. The special teams from now until the Super Bowl are going to play a part at some point and they need to step up and they need to play big and they need to make sure that they're not making mistakes. I was watching that 49er game. Devondre Campbell was in on, you know, on special teams. And that was like earlier in the season where, you right. know, wasn't all pro Devondre Campbell quite yet, but like if what, whatever you need to do, this is, this is, there's three games left on an all in season. And you know what? You have depth right now, you have talent and you have to go and use it. And if that means guys like Devondre Campbell are on special teams. Or Alan Lazard, who literally volunteered a couple months yeah. ago, you know, like get, it. whoever needs to be out there. Do you think they bring more back? up from the practice squad to return i do i think i think he showed enough that he can be a player that a they trust catching the ball and that b can make a couple people miss in the open field he's been the first person that like when the ball comes down i didn't feel like oh god what's gonna happen? <laughs> right. so like i think he's only had what three times two or three, three times returns i think yeah but, something like hey, that, but, but he looks competent he looked just so like you say natural natural like you yeah. know it when you see it right you can totally tell when a guy is nervous and not confident and you fine. can absolutely tell when a guy is confident has done it before and knows how to set up blocks knows when to stick his foot in the ground and get upfield you saw all of that from more so i'm with you i hope yeah i would i wouldn't be surprised especially if like an mvs can't go and you have an extra roster spot to potentially right. bring up any but either way i expect him to be up what do you expect right real quick before i let you go what do you expect the starting o-line to look like I think Bakhtiari and then Runyon, Myers, Patrick. And then I'm going to say Dennis Kelly, just because I'm not sure if Billy Turner is going to be ready in time. But if right. Billy Turner is ready, I would fully expect him to go with Billy Turner. I'm with you. Uh, I'll yeah. tell you what, though. I've said for the last week or so, I would, I, Aaron Nagler, if I was coach, I'd probably stick with Dennis. Just Me too. He's been, he's been, at a, he's been playing awesome. at a real high level. He's been really consistent. Why why mess with it? Right. I, and I know they love Billy, but I know I, I, he's been. He's been such a such a consistently good force there on the right side. I've I been beaming know. about Kelly. Like he's he's been stupid good over the last it's ever since Billy went down. Clean like, as hell, man. Just I would not hell. mess with it either. I want I want to ask you though, what how, what did you feel about the the draw play at the end of uh, the Cowboys game? <laughs> well, here's the thing. Okay, yeah, everyone's gonna kill Mike, and I get it. And yes, kill him. Go absolutely kill him. 
<laughs> but if his quarterback just understands that the ref has got to touch the ball, they actually get it spiked and they actually have a chance to throw it into the end zone there at the end with what probably one second left. But the fact that they're fooling around and like trying to put the ball down themselves, like what are you doing? It's, You've it's got to know as a quarterback in that situation, as hell as an NFL football player, you've got to know that, that the official has to touch and set the ball, not you. You're not allowed to just set it and go. It's not the backyard. Like, it's interesting. Again, Mike was ridiculous for trying it, but they actually could have pulled it off if the guys actually tasked with executing had known the rule. I was I was rewatching the end of that 49ers game because they hit the ball over the middle to Devontae right. and then they had to run up and spike it. And I couldn't I was on the condensed version, so I couldn't like tell. But it looked like they just placed the ball up, too. And the ref had to come up and just touch the ball and then ran out. He of literally the, play. the ref in the 49ers game did a did exactly that. He just ran up and touched it touched and got it out of and there. Got out. But so this like, guy for the Cowboys game, he he actually picked it up, moved it back a little yeah. bit. Like, how does he know where the hell the official spot is? Yeah. He's standing like 20 yards, 30 yards back, and he's going to run up and tell me exactly where Dak's, you know, body touched the ground. Like, it's really, all he needed to do was touch it and get out of the way. But yeah. You can't yeah, like a, it's all kind of ridiculous. Like somebody's gonna do like the the wrecking ball for Miley Cyrus because he just came in <laughs> like a wrecking, which is obliterated. They broke right through everything. the line. <laughs> Offensive lineman flying. It was it was. Beautiful. Hey man, isn't it great to not have to worry about Mike McCarthy ruining your season? I mean, hey, we we lived with it for so long. Now now Cowboys fans get to get to deal with it. It's, like boy, I said oh it was the most McCarthy way to end a football game of all. I mean, here's the thing. I, I will say this because I did say this when Mike was in town with the Packers. Everyone hates Mike because he's too conservative until he does something aggressive. And then everybody hates Mike because he's too aggressive. too aggressive. You know, like that's an insanely aggressive call. But they are protecting the sides. And, you know, if you try and the, the percentages on a Hail Mary there are real super low. Yeah. Right. So he's trying to get one play in, get one second on the clock and have actually a decent chance of throwing it into the end zone on the last second play. I understand the thinking behind it. His guys didn't execute. It's a super high risk play that didn't play out. That's it. Yeah, no, I, I have I a hard time that. just like completely killing the guy about it. No, for, I totally agree. I, I think the one thing that like if you're going to if you're going to do that, obviously you have to make sure that everyone knows exactly what exactly what's what required. And what kills me is he said, "Oh, we practice it all the time." You cannot not well tell enough. me you practice that all the time. Not you well can't. enough. You forgot a no. you forgot a key point in it. And I do think too. There's uh, for me personally. There's just too many working variables in that situation from the right. clock manager to the referee spotting the ball, to your quarterback getting down at the right spot, to everyone getting set at the same time. To me, in, in that sort of situation, in that moment, with literally everything on the line. With 14 just, seconds. If you got 20 seconds, maybe. Yeah. Like even 14 that. is a whole lot. Yeah. It's tough, but it was a good game. A little I enjoyed it. For it. Oh, it was great. Now we get to face the 49ers. It's going to be a lot of fun. Andy, I can't thank you enough for hanging out, talking football. Uh, we'll be back next week. Hopefully, talking about whoever the hell they're going to play in the NFC Championship game. Can't wait. Uh, make sure you check out Andy's work. Of course, the Pack-A-Day podcast right here, featured on cheeseheadtv.com. And you can find him at Packer Report and everywhere else on the internet. Anybody's talking about the Packers, Andy Herman will be there for you. Andy, thanks a lot, man. You bet. Go Pack.